Hello and welcome to the Empowered Expat Wife podcast. If you moved abroad following your significant other and are looking to create a fulfilled life on your terms there, this is the place to be. I'm your host, Camilla Quintana, and I'm so excited to be on this journey with you and to inspire you to create the kind of life abroad you truly deserve. Hello lovelies, happy Thursday. I hope you're all doing well wherever you are in the world and I'm so happy to be back here with you and to speak to you about a subject that I feel like is not being addressed enough, at least not in a positive way. So for quite some time now, I've been wanting to dedicate an episode to the stay at home expat mom and housewife because most of my expat wife clients, they are not currently working in the traditional sense at least. Um, but what they do is remarkable nonetheless. And you know, unfortunately, I think the work of a mother and, and a housewife is seldomly celebrated. And when it is, it comes across as kind of 1950s-ish, right? But it is actually a really big deal and it does deserve mentioning and honoring you know, I am so grateful for the feminists who fought for women's rights in the past few decades. And it's to a great extent, thanks to these courageous women, that today we can get an education, have a career, start a business, vote, be financially independent, have our own passports and bank accounts, and pursue our own individual goals, uh, you know, aside from the family obligations, like they used to call it. And I know that all of these things uh, were not possible before and even in pretty recent times, shockingly. But I think the fight for a women's freedom can never be over until we don't accept a woman's right to choose to dedicate herself to her children and her home. That's as legitimately a choice as anything else. And I know that a lot of stay-at-home moms are filled with a sense of guilt for not working. And they often feel the need to sort of justify their decision or feel that, you know, at least when encountering other people, it's not as valuable. What they do is not as valuable as what others do just because they work in an office or something like that. And that's not okay. Now, of course, on the other hand, in the case of accompanying wives, which, you know, all of us are, be it expat or diplomat, it's often not a free choice or not entirely. There are indeed challenges along the way that make working and building a career very difficult, even if you would actually really like to do so. And I've had clients struggling with these obstacles, others for whom it wasn't a big deal, rather an opportunity to now take care of their family and their home. And then again, others who were sort of content for the time being, but felt that itch to venture out on their own and have the outlook of some kind of professional challenge, at least, you know, in the near future. So regardless of which of these three categories you belong to, this episode is for you. And my aim is, as always, to provide you with lots of value, the type of value that you can take with you right after listening to this and implement in your own life. All right? So if you are currently discontent with your status quo of being a stay-at-home mom, I'm going to help you to reframe this experience so that you can accept and enjoy it more and find more sense in it all. I'll also show you a few quote unquote ways out of the situation and what you can do about your most pressing pain points when it comes to financial dependency, employability, and some other ones as well. And if you are currently fully owning and loving this experience of being a stay-at-home mom, you're still going to get some valuable inputs and inspirations in order to be really empowered in your role. So as I alluded to before, I'm really passionate about this topic and I have a lot of respect for all the women who are working as full-time moms. And yes, I said working because we all know it is hard work. There is so much that it entails. It's incredibly important and really hard work. And of course, I know that from experience also, because I have three sons, I, I do work 
but from home. So while I, you know, I do have this strong professional and intellectual outlet, but I am essentially always there. And, you know, we don't have any extended family nearby. We've been having to social distance. My husband comes home late from work. So I'm definitely their go-to person. I'm their main reference. And so I definitely know what it's like, you know, also the the joys and the burdens, let me call it, of being a full-time mom. And then also, I was raised by an incredible woman who, apart from being intelligent, skilled, educated, emotionally intelligent, kind, inspiring, and an absolute role model for how I live my life and what I value in life, my mom was at home with us and she transmitted to us that she loved it she fully owned it and my siblings and i have so much respect for her as an individual not just for like her as a mom but for her as a person like we would not have any more respect for her if she were the ceo of a large firm right and i believe that has to do with how she carried herself the way she treated herself and her children and everything that we witnessed her do and how we saw her do it. So that made me think that how you experience life as a stay-at-home mom will depend a lot on your mindset and how you view your role in the family and in society. So let's talk about your mindset, all right? You've probably been in a situation, let's say uh, an event, you know, these the kind of events that right now with COVID we cannot have, but we did before. And uh, you were probably asked about what you do. And what did you answer? Did you stutter around? Did you say, oh, well, nothing. I've, I've relocated for my husband who is whatever position he is, like this was the only accomplishment in the world. Or did you maybe start out strong like, well, I used to be a lawyer and then get nervous and finished with, but since we moved here, I'm just at home. Just at home. Let me ask you, if your husband or someone really, really close to you were to say these things to you in in a disregarding tone, oh, you're not doing anything. What do you know? You're just at home. I assume you would be pissed and with good reason because it's not an accurate description of who you are and what you do, right? You are never just a stay-at-home mom. You definitely don't do nothing. We know that. So just as you wouldn't allow anyone else to disrespect you like that, you can't do that to yourself either. Don't dismiss the heart and valuable work you do every day and every night probably, especially if you have small kids. Don't dismiss the impact and the responsibility that you are having. And if you remember me talking about the expat identity crisis, I touch on that too. We shouldn't attach so much to an identity um, that is a self-created image of ourselves that does not even serve us. You know, it could never do who we are in all our beautiful complexity justice and outside factors like our profession or our country of residence, they may change. And we very well know that. So if we make these things our identity, we have a problem because as soon as that changes, we enter an identity crisis. So when it comes to defining your identity, I'd like to encourage you to steer clear of those outside factors that you have no control over or less control over and instead focus on your inner traits, the things that are always true about you, no matter where you are, no matter what you do and whether you work. So when it comes to being a stay-at-home mom and a housewife, Let me take you through a little mindset transformation exercise that I've created for you. And I want to do that by adopting a professional mindset. Okay, so we're going to treat what you do like a profession. So step number one, give yourself a job title. For instance, family manager, family CEO. Director of Family and Housekeeping, what's your job title going to be? Now listen, even if you don't use this in a conversation, I mean, you could, but I understand if you don't. 
just note how it makes you feel to think of yourself as family executive and child development expert. It sounds awesome, right? And it sounds important and respectable, and it surely does you more justice. So thinking of yourself with a title like that, I bet it makes you feel capable, accomplished, even motivated. So from now on, please do me this one favor. Think of yourself in terms of this job title, the one that you've chosen for yourself. And now step number two. With this job title, you now need a job description. And I want you to write that on a piece of paper in really fancy terms. So instead of cooking, write in charge of culinary arts and of designing and implementing an optimal nutrition plan for the family. Instead of changing diapers, breastfeeding, and singing lullabies, write responsible for the baby's mental and emotional well-being and development, creating early learning initiatives to stimulate the baby's brain power. Hmm, this is just as accurate. Actually, it's probably even more accurate and it feels so important. All we did here was change the terminology. And I always say that language and the words we choose have an incredible impact on how we view a situation, how we view ourselves, our lives, and how we show up. All right, so now step number three of this little mindset transformational exercise is to create a CV. And yes, you heard that right. I know that thinking about your CV and the gaps on it, it makes you probably want to cringe, but I want you to create a CV by writing out your skills because you've acquired so many skills as a mom and by organizing the household that honestly, an employer would just drool over. They should just drool over that. You know, that was my sentiment when after my, my first son was born and I, I worked at, a, at an international congress organizer. And when I went back after, you know, taking some time uh, for maternity leave, I felt like I was so much more efficient. I was so much quicker at everything I did. I, I saw, you know, 10 things at the same time. I mean, this is just one example that we notice after becoming a mom, how it is shaping us and the, all the skills we acquire. For me, that was also the time that I decided I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to have my own business to really showcase all of these skills that we may not receive enough credit for or we may not give ourselves enough credit for them. So I'm here to tell you that you should, you know, it is admirable. What you have achieved as a full-time mom is admirable. So let me give you an example of something that you could put on your CV. Um, March 2016, let's say, until ongoing, Position, now you add whatever you chose, family manager, director of homemaking, and child development specialist. I'm going to go for it. I render excellent work on the high levels of pressure and do not shy away from long hours. My areas of expertise are leadership and team management, conflict mediation, negotiation. Oh yes, negotiation with children. You need a lot of negotiation skills. Multitasking organizing and time management, achieving goals in an atmosphere of noise and distraction, culinary arts, building architectural models using Lego bricks, and the list goes on. You can get really creative. And listen, I would like to think that in today's world, there will be more and more employers who will actually see the value of the countless skills and qualities a woman acquires when she takes a break from the traditional job market to raise her children. But even if they don't, let's not depend on you know someone else's opinion of you, even if they don't, what matters is that you do. Because if you can become aware of your value to the family and to society, because you are raising the next generation of humans, then you will be able to sell these years, let's just call it these years that you step back from a professional career, much better to a future employer. And you'll foster, you know, this 
confident growth mindset, this way of looking for opportunities, recognizing opportunities when they come along. And this all has to do with your confidence and the way you view yourself. And that's why I'm taking you through this exercise. So please keep that list of the skills you acquired. Keep, you know, uh, the, the whole CV that you're doing. Read through it often. I like to hang things up on the inside of my wardrobe door, you know, just to remind me regularly of what I've accomplished and what I'm capable of. And you should do the same thing. So the next time that you're tempted to dismiss what you're doing as a stay-at-home mom, you can also feel more confident and more at ease and you can answer in a more empowered and accurate way. Okay, so step number four, and I love this. Let's talk money. Unfortunately, the role of a full-time mom and housewife is sometimes being diminished because there is no salary. But if you had to hire someone else to do everything you do, what would that cost? Have you ever thought of that? Go ahead and calculate it. What would it cost to hire? Let me just, you know, make this up and you adapt it to your lifestyle and your needs. A chef for two hours. A bilingual educated nanny for eight hours. A night nurse on standby in case kids wake up or need, you know, a bottle or something for 12 hours, Uh, home care assistance, cleaning, for five hours, then uh, sort of like a supervisor of home affairs, you know, someone who can uh, bear all this mental load that we have as women and thinking, okay, did I do the shopping? What are we going to eat tomorrow? Do the kids have what they need in school? All these things uh, that, you know, we got going on in our minds nonstop. Uh, Someone has to do that too. And then, of course, you'll need a chauffeur because who's going to drive the kids anywhere, right? So let's say chauffeur for two hours a day. Now, I don't know what what this costs in your current country, but I would love for you to investigate just for the heck of it and for fun and write out what salary these people would get. And I don't know what this salary, this combined salary will be in your current country, but this is actually what your work is worth. So I want to say congratulations because you've probably just turned into the highest earning member of your family, at least on paper. (laughs) So if this still hasn't convinced you of your worth, your value, your expertise that you have acquired as a stay-at-home mom, then let me offer this advice and this alternative to you, which is step number five. Make a three or five year plan. If you have small children or working is just not in the cards for you right now, uh, maybe you're not allowed to work where you live right now, then you can ease some of the pressure and the stress that that bears for you by making a three to five year plan as opposed to the one year plan that we're so um, used to doing. You know, we make New Year's resolutions. We want everything to happen so quickly. I think all expat women should have that because it allows for baby breaks, it allows for relocations in between, it allows for readjusting, even reinventioning yourself a little bit, and yet you are working towards a long-term goal. And with that plan in hand, uh, on which you can put all of your professional goals and aspirations, you can make peace with your present you can stop stressing so much, stop fleeing in your thoughts, you know, to that other life where you have the successful career that you would so love to have. You can stop resisting for the time being, knowing that you have some room, you have some room to grow within those three, four, five years, six years. Again, you adapt that to your uh, family planning, to your host country, to your upcoming relocations. Um, But let's get away from the one year plan. I, I think that's just unnecessary pressure. And I also think, you know, it's so important to Um, come back to the present moment and enjoy life as it is happening to us. We don't want to remember, you know, our time as a mom uh, just 
burdened by the stress of actually I want to do something else. I think it's not healthy for us. It's not healthy for our children. And while, you know, I, I absolutely encourage you to have your goals and aspirations. This is so important and it, it is your right. It is your right to have that. But just in case it is not possible for you to pursue that right now, I really strongly want to suggest to make peace with the status quo and leave it for a near future where, where this will be possible. When your kids are older, when uh, maybe you moved somewhere else, or just when the time is ripe, right? Okay, so now let's tackle some common pain points of the stay-at-home mom and housewife. The first one is obviously financial dependency. So the first thing that comes to my mind is, do you have any way in your life to create a passive income stream? I'm a huge fan of passive income. I know not everyone will have the possibility to, for instance, uh, rent out a property or uh, live off a, a lucrative investment or some dividends maybe, but it's definitely something worth giving some thought. And discussing this with your spouse also, is there any way that you can generate some passive income in your lives and that you could potentially even be the beneficiary of? Another question I want to pose is, if you need to earn some money right now, what could you do or sell? What comes to mind? Maybe you're artistic and could do something along those lines. Maybe you could teach your native language or a skill of yours to others. Maybe you have a hobby that you could turn into at least some cash. Listen, this may not make you rich or financially independent, but something is something. And I strongly believe in the sort of compound effect that by experiencing this feeling and this reassurance of, yes, I made some money, even if it's not that much, um, I got skills that I can turn into money. And by the way, we all do. That will make it even easier for you to tap into more interesting opportunities like this, to tap into the necessary mindset. You know, it'll keep you looking out for opportunities and um, take more action steps towards making more money. So if this is your concern, then definitely start thinking about how you could generate some income for yourself. And it's okay to start small, but you got to start somewhere. Also, I think it's important that we all learn about finances. I have two episodes so far on financial independence. I will link them in the session notes and they'll definitely provide some valuable input to you. And I also plan to revisit this topic in future episodes. Now, a second big pain point is employability. So I think the exercise that I took you through will be really helpful to get a little creative with your CV even. And most importantly, it will give you the confidence that you need to sell yourself to a future employer and to take on new tasks and look for and seize opportunities. So again, if working is not in the cards for you right now, so you might not even have a work permit where you are, or maybe you have really small children and you just decided against it. What you could do in the meantime is volunteer or collaborate with an organization, ideally using your skill set. You know, using the skills that you needed in the career that you left behind and would like to return to eventually or using skills that could be of value in a future type of work that you would be interested in. And that way, at least you can stay active in your field. You can network and you can put that on your CV also. It may not seem like the real deal, but if you own it and explain it to a future employer in a way that convinces them, I think you can really make it work. And this is also what CV specialist Lucy Samuels uh, told us in episode eight, I believe, about building an attractive CV as an expat spouse. So you can also go back to that episode and check that out. Then there's the option of starting your own business, which is something that I opted for and I love it. 
I know starting a business and, and being an entrepreneur does not call out to everybody, but if you are interested in this and you're willing to give this a try, then go back to episode seven in which I interviewed Amel Diraghi about creating a portable business, which is great because you can actually take it with you no matter where you go. And then I also wanted to tell you that there are more and more remote job opportunities. I've had several coaching clients already who worked remotely so they could work from home and with the flexibility to move to a different country and still remain with the same company as they work remotely. Uh, and I think that with the coronavirus, there will be an even greater tendency for job positions like that. So look out for those. Talk to people about those. If you want to get back into the job market, let people know about your intentions and you will see that opportunities will arise when you're looking for them. All right, so pain point number three that I want to tackle is the lack of intellectual stimulation that we can sometimes get when we spend our days day in, day out with the children. I was just talking to a friend this morning about the importance of always staying growth oriented. Growth and progressing is a basic human need. Some need it more than others, but we all do need it. And I'm a complete nerd when it comes to that. So I am the first to be like an advocate for looking for ways in your day-to-day -day life to grow. And in this day and age, I think there's really no reason not to because of the tremendous offer we have. Education is no longer just a privilege for some like it used to be back in the day. You can grow and stimulate your intellect by reading, taking courses online or offline. I mean, the online world has brought so many incredible opportunities to us. I am so grateful for that. You know, you don't need to wait until someone offers a course that interests you in your town or in your immediate surroundings. You can now go online and learn from the best the best and most renowned teachers offer online courses. The best universities offer courses and also long distance degrees. I mean, there's just such a plethora of things that you can do, uh, ways in which you can grow and learn and progress. It's really just a matter of looking around, right? And I know that not working makes many women feel like their opinions and their inputs at, let's say, social gatherings or even with their spouse aren't as valuable. But again, it does not have to be this way. Everyone can find the time to, for instance, read the newspaper for five minutes a day at least. And when you do it every day, let me tell you, the knowledge builds up because news repeat themselves, right? So it may sound like a huge deal to be up to date with current affairs or up to date with uh, literature or whatever topics you notice uh, come up in your surroundings and with the people you hang out with everyone can find those five minutes. And if you have small children and you feel like, you know, you don't have free hands to pick up a book, you can choose audiobooks and podcasts like I do. I listen to one audiobook per week, although recently it may be a little less because I've been cheating on audiobooks with podcasts. And so depending on how many interesting podcast episodes I listen to, I may consume a little less audiobooks. But it's a great thing to do on any car ride, while you're cooking, you know, and but don't dismiss it like, oh, I could not do that. Really give it a try. Find ways to make life work for you so that you can get the best and the most out of your life. Okay, so I quickly wanted to touch on another pain point because this is something that's come up in with several of my clients and it is having help as a stay-at-home mom and housewife. So in some countries, as we know, it is much more common to have help around the house and that can then create a sense of guilt in the woman like, well, I'm not working and yet I have someone helping me, me with the chores in the household. So what is really my role here? What's the point of me here? And listen, I've been through the same. And what I can tell you is what I tell my clients, which is that having help just upgrades your household tasks and 
problems, if you will. Because now it's no longer acceptable to, let's say, not iron the shirts or to serve sandwiches for dinner or whatever that means in your household. Of course, we all are accustomed to different things and have uh, different priorities, which is, which is great. But I want to assure you that having help means that not only more gets done around the house, but there's also more to do. And I have help and there's still plenty of stuff for me to do. It makes it easier for me to work, of course, and also to spend quality time with the kids because I can delegate some things. So the bottom line here is, and I'm mentioning that because it's come up, as I said, in several of my client sessions, having help does not make you redundant around the house. It actually raises the bar and the number of things there are to do. And I actually wrote a blog post about this, so I'm going to link that in the session notes also. I'm going to leave you with a whole lot of links. And um, another thing that I'm going to quickly touch on, so a pain point number five, which I haven't put in my outline here in front of me, my cheat sheet, but I still want to make a mention, which is, especially when you have small children, the feeling of not being able to do anything for yourself. So I'm not going to, you know... uh, There are enough people out there that will tell you how important it is that you do need to take time for yourself. Uh, You do need to make self-care a priority. It is true. Um, I know that sometimes when you don't feel ready for it, it can feel like an additional stress. Like, oh my God, I have so much on my plate. I hardly get any sleep because I have a baby, let's say. And now I'm also supposed to meditate for instance, right? And if this is the way you're feeling currently, then I want to remind you of my micro moments of self-care that I introduced to you back in uh, episode 11, which was called How to Avoid Holiday Burnout and Blues. And that is basically a really clever strategy to sneak in moments of self-care into your really busy routine without needing a whole lot of time or uh, help you know, in order to implement it. So for instance, one of my favorite ones is to combine something you love to do with something you have to do. For me personally, that would be listening to an audiobook or podcast while cooking. Get creative and think about what things are really good for you, what things really make you feel nurtured and like you're taking care of yourself, and how could you possibly combine that with some kind of chore that you have to do. And you know, the beautiful thing is that when you anchor that, so I know that cooking is always accompanied for me with some kind of audio stimulation, intellectual audio stimulation, right? So I actually look forward to cooking um, and it's, it doesn't feel like a chore to me. Another thing I mentioned is to, especially as I said, if you have very small children, um, take a long shower. A long shower is a luxury for a mom. So um, if you can extend shower time by just five minutes and use all your favorite products, don't be stingy with, you know, using your favorite products. Something that makes you feel good. Water is so healing and it cleanses your energy also. So uh, the shower definitely has a lot of you know benefits aside from hygiene (laughs) so that's another one and then I introduced some other ideas for sneaking in those micro moments of self-care in times where you feel like you are not able to dedicate more time to you and again if you have small children let me also assure you that the years fly by and they'll grow up really fast and you will be much more independent just a few months or a few years at max down the line. Okay, so I said everything I wanted to say. I still feel like this is such an ongoing and sensitive conversation and I'm just so glad to be able to have this platform and to And to say that, because honestly, shaming women for being at home or making them feel insignificant for being at home is such a pity. Not just because the work they do is actually very hard, very valuable. I mean, 
I don't know if we can think of anything more valuable than raising the next generation of humans, but also because it does so much harm, and especially in the expat and diplomatic circles where many women are pushed into this role. And it's, it's difficult. I know it's difficult to pursue a career and build something for yourself. It's not impossible. And this podcast has you know, given a lot of inputs about this as well. But still, I don't want to focus everything on how to be uh, successful in a career, how to build a thriving business, how to be financially independent. I also wanted to take this moment, this half an hour to honor you as an expat mom, as a stay-at-home mom, as a housewife, and honor all the efforts you make, everything you do for your family, and tell you that I see you, I value you, and I really want to encourage you to do the same, to really know your worth, know your significance, and know the incredible work you're doing for your family, without which, you know, this lifestyle would not even be possible. And listen, if you do feel that itch, that it's time to do something else, and you want to add other elements, let me call it, to your life, or maybe you are struggling with your status quo, maybe you're not happy and fulfilled in, in your role, then reach out to me. Just go to my website, camillacantana.com and book a 30-minute free consultation so that we can talk about what's going on and see how I can help you improve the quality of your life. I look forward to connecting with you and uh, I would love to know what has your experience as a stay-at-home mom been like? What are your biggest joys because there are so many and what are your biggest struggles? Let me know in the comments on, on Instagram where I can be found at coach.camillacantana. And now let me wrap this up. Wish you a lovely week ahead and I'll be back with you next Thursday. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. Please make sure to share this episode with your expat besties and show me some love in the reviews. Want more juicy content designed for expat wives? Then head over to my website www.camillacantana.com or follow me on Instagram and Facebook at coach.camillacantana.